Hello everyone, this is Darwell20 and welcome to episode 42 of Darwell20's Stoneblock series. Uh, today, hooking up an importer and a stack upgrade and speed upgrades and all the cool stuff that goes with an ender chest. So that in the event that I'm, uh, I don't know, maybe out and about in the end or potentially somewhere else like other dimensions, uh, I can just drop stuff in my ender pouch and have it right into the system. How cool. Is that good old time standard uh, ender chest import mechanics? So uh, last episode we set up an enderman farm, and we did uh, I did kind of like leave the game running for a while. So hopefully there's a ton. Assuming nothing broke, I wound up. I don't know if I did this on camera. Did I do this on camera? I might have, but I basically found that this thing wasn't emptying fast enough. So I I, I did that, um, and this thing is still emptying with a filter. Uh, blacklist dimlet parcels over here is whitelist dimlet parcels. Uh, and we have 14 stacks. Nice. Yeah, I did leave the game running for quite a while. Um, and to be fair, the, these things are just getting wrecked. So that's nice. Yeah, they're getting destroyed. What's funny to me is that the looting upgrades don't seem to affect the dimlet parcel drop. How weird is that, right? Did I also do this on camera? Did I add the extreme vector plates on camera? I forget. I was making minor tweaks and changes to this whole setup just to try and make it a little bit more efficient for things. Um, you know, so that's that. Uh, it's running pretty well, obviously, because we've gotten stacks of these things. So, hooray. Let's make sure. Oh, right. If you're on here, that's bad news bears. Right. Um, I can just do this. Ha ha ha. Nice. Okay. So I can put all my dimlet parcels away, um, all my speed upgrades and anything else I potentially don't want or need on me at this exact moment, and to home we go. So I'll let that continue to run, right? The dimlet parcels will do with dimlet parcel-y things. We'll collect a whole bunch of them. Now let's get to opening the dimlet parcels. So as I recall, I should be able to use a mechanical, or yeah, one of these dudes, mechanical users. So I'll need, obviously, a dropper and some mechanical user. Uh, and we will want some speed upgrades, of which we have quite a few. Yay. Um, and we do have, like, more than enough, right? Uh, stuff. Somebody, by the way, said that I can make two water mills plus the angel ring equals the flying ring from angel ring to bauble, uh, which I presume doesn't use DGP at all. That's that's kind of a neat trick. Uh, however, to oh look at that, there's other recipes for them too. Huh. Cool. Look at that. All right. Uh, I guess that's neat, right? I might as well try that. 32 GP in use, right? I mean, we have tons of GP. Um, did I set up water mills? May or may not have the option to make this. We need more stone burnt. This guy might be up here. Yeah, there he is. And you, buddy. Okay, so another water mill for me, and then you guy can go here. Well, isn't that a neat trick? Cool, and now he doesn't use... He feels about the same. Does he feel a little bit slower, or is that just my imagination? I can't tell. It doesn't matter all that much, he's fine. So, I don't know, part of me wants to check. Uh, ring, angel ring. Can I, uh, yeah, making these is tricky, isn't it? Yeah, because we need all the the mobs and whatnot. Eh, I guess we'll just leave it as is. It's all good. It's all good. We're cool. Not super stressed. So opening up these things. Uh, so we're going to want some kind of uh, vacuum chest or, you know, the vacuum hopper. We've been using vacuum hoppers this area. Vacuumator. Vacuumulator. Collects items in an area. Kind of cool. I don't know that we've played with this thing yet. Um, vacuum chest. Or uh, the ranged collector. That's always a, a popular option. I don't know that we've even gotten into much of that stuff. Do we have coal? Yeah, we do. Let's 
Let's go ranged collector, because that's a, a personal favorite, as we know. And let's figure out a spot with which... Let's get our alchemical chest. I thought I had one of those. Did I just put one away? I guess not. Uh, so what do we want to set this up at? Does it really matter? Uh, in here seems like a good enough place, right? Uh, so we're going to want servos, and we're going to want item ducts. We might want this to be a little bit faster, but we'll find out. Uh, so you're going to go there. You're going to go there. It doesn't super matter where we set this up, obviously, right? But you're going to be on ignore mode. You're going to be that, and you're going to be... The dimlet parcels, right? Oh, you just... Oh, so you don't drop them into the world? All right, well, that's good to know. So we don't even need that bit. Um, so basically what we want to do here is just blacklist dimlet parcels. Right? And that should be about all there is to it. So I put these in. That works. But I kind of want you to go a little bit faster. Can I speed you up in any way, shape, or form? I don't think so. Uh, maybe we should do another item transfer method. Uh, did we say translocators? They are in the pack. These things are always kind of a fun option, right? Now, I know that there's a way to make you filter these translocators. Yeah, you chill for a minute, buddy. Translocators filtering. There's redstone, there's glowstone. What's the other upgrade? Hey, why are you even doing anything? Stop, bro. Redstone on. Thanks, buddy. Um, translocators filter. Is there something I have to put on there to filter it? Or do I, like, shift right click? What's the deal? Oh, you know what? It's not shift right click. It's, yeah. Uh, the problem is, is I don't know that I can blacklist with translocators. Like, if I put this in here as the filter, what happens? Yeah, it only moves that. I don't think I can blacklist. That would be an ideal thing to use, except for the lack of blacklisting. Womp womp. So I think probably the best solution then would be to use the old transfer node with a filter. Cool. So when I do that, you should not pull those things out. Okay. And then you're going to need some speed upgrades. Neat. I'll take it. Sounds like we're gonna need a muffler, though. Uh, you know what? Sound pattern, that's right. We can do something like this, can't we? Shh. Yes. So level up is the sound that I want you to know about. That's the one that's playing, right? And then we want sound dampener from random things. We might need multiples of these, but that's okay. So am I correct? I put that in there and I put that in there and I put you on. That's not bad. Can I have another sound pattern? That shouldn't be a problem. Right, and I put this in here and do armor equip generic. And now we hear nothing. Ha ha! I like that sound muffler, I really do. Uh, that is that is cool. I like that you get to specify. I would love it if I could put multiple sounds on the same pattern, but other than that, very, very cool. Very cool, right? So let's grab an, uh, not external storage, but exporter. Uh, 
I kind of want you to only keep like one stack of dimlet parcels in there at all times. So what I'll probably do is do an interface. Make one of those for me, would you, Chief? Um, some cables. You guys can go away. What I'm going to do is have you here with a retriever and item ducks. Right? Uh, and I'm going to set you to keep. You know what? 32 sounds like a good number, right? Um, and you can pull out, you know, 16 at a time, right? Uh, and you're going to whitelist dimlet parcels. And you're going to keep that in there. And then we just hook you up. And then we put this guy here, right? So you're gonna automatically stock 64 dimlet parcels. You're going to ignore redstone, which means you're gonna pull in 16 at a time and always keep 32 in the inventory. Ta-da! How cool is that? So that way the inventory doesn't fill up with dimlet parcels. All right, so with that all taken care of now, we are now automatically opening dimlet parcels, right? So that's cool. Interface import, interface export. Why are you interface importing these things? Oh, you know what? Because you're bouncing back. Interesting. Did not expect that. Let's set you to be one at a time. And let's also do speed and stack. These have an EMC value, so between episodes, I, uh, you know, did a little something. Did a little something cool. All right, so that should be good, right? So you're doing your thing, right? And we're getting a bunch of dimlet control stuff. So while this is all opening up, right? Put that away. Uh, let's also put away you and you. Anything else that's like, yeah, you can go away. That should be good for now. All right, so while this is all being opened up, right? And we're getting a bunch of dimlet types. Let's uh, get into RF Tools Dimensions. So some things we're probably gonna wanna make. Dimensional Inscriber, and this is one of those mods where I'm always like, how does it work again? We do have ink sacks, right? I'm pretty sure I remember how this works. Yay, good, we do. Just want to make sure before I use up ink sacks, because I remember how much of a nuisance they were to get. Oh, look at you, Awakened Draconium. All right. Uh, hey, buddy, can you... Thanks, bro. Okay, RF Tools Dimensional Builder doesn't look too bad. Just get a stack of you guys, because why not? Resources are pretty much infinite at this point. Dimensional Editor, I don't know that we need that. Dimlet Workbench, though, we totally want. Um, now, I believe we just need a Dimlet base part to make the Dimlet Workbench. Cool. All right, do we need this setup anymore or can I maybe get rid of this? I mean like, you know, we've got... I feel like it's not necessary at this point because we've got dragon egg generators and we can make dragon eggs with EMC, right? So this has suddenly turned into, haha, <laughs> look at that, cool. Um, a room specifically dedicated to dimension inscribing uh, and builder and workbench, right? So inscribing is where you make the things, right? Uh, let's teach some recipes. I need to teach you how to make an empty this thingy. Cool. Um, and I wouldn't mind you knowing how to make, how do you make dimlet eight? Yeah, zeros is that. So that I can just craft on demand, right? Um, anything else I want to have from here? Probably not. Yeah, I think we're cool. I think we're good. I think I know the rest of this stuff uh, by memory, so I should be good to do this. So, like, if I wanted to make an empty dimensional tab, right? Uh, you go in there. 
Cool. So if I wanted to create a random dimension, like a truly random whatever in the world dimension that you want, right? We could do that. What I'm gonna do is put a flux point right there so that you have energy coming in. Nice. Um, you should have no limit on your power transfer, but it looks like the machine only accepts 50,000 RF a tick, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, but I'm interested to see if the flux point, if we maybe stuck another one on the back here. We'll see if that makes any difference. I don't know if you, yeah, you do retain. All right, well, we'll see. It may or may not help, it doesn't matter. We have plenty of power, right? We have like bajillions of power. How are you doing power setup? 3.3 thousand RF tick, not the greatest. Uh, let's do, I wanna do, I do wanna check on my compact machine real quick because it's been a little bit since I looked at it. We still have plenty of power, but I just wanna see what's stuck in here. Um, disenchantment and slimy generator are not running. So you, sir, what's your problem? Oh, I see. How did slime get in here? That's probably how. So I think that's gonna fix things, right? Yeah, now Slimy's running again. Hooray, what's that? Disenchantment generator. Oh, I have a bad feeling about this. So you are making enchanted books, but they don't actually have an enchantment on them, do they? Aha, so they can't actually go to the disenchantment generator. Good to know. All right, let's turn this off and see if we can solve this real quick. I would, yeah, well. I might have to look into that off camera. We're gonna have to figure out a solution to that. There might be a solution, but for now I can just turn the thing off. Or you know what, I could leave it on. It's just nether stars. Nether stars are making power for us, which is sufficient for now. So we'll come back to the disenchantment generator and see if we can't get a way for EMC to work with a disenchantment generator. For now, we're just gonna have to remember in the back of our mind, oh right, that doesn't exactly work. Cool. Um, so anyway, back to this stuff that we were working on. So I should be able to create and you need power too, huh? Plugs, plugs are for adding points. Sweet. All right, so if I wanted to make, so here's what I think one of the better ones. Um, if we went with, Let's see, shiny, that doesn't seem to be good. Um, Awakened Draconium doesn't have an EMC value. Emerald blocks have an EMC of 147K, right? Um, however, emeralds can be used to make silky jewels, which that's 224K. So 224K is the number to beat, right? Um, so, cause I think I can make a silky jewel dimension block. What other blocks exist that might surpass 200 and something K? Do nether star blocks? Do nether star blocks exist? Um, they do, 1.253. I wonder if compressed nether star blocks could exist uh, as an RF tools dimension type. Sky, nether material, no. All right. Um, So dark emerald blocks, there are a lot of types of emerald blocks, holy cow. Um, interesting that I can't top, type in GEI while that's happening, but how about any of these blocks? None of them come close to the shiny blocks. Galgadorian's 545. but it's not in there, as far as I can see. Interesting. Um, platinum. Hmm, interesting, interesting, interesting. All right, so let's go back to this. I just wanna make sure that this search is working the way I want it to, right? So silky jewels. 
silky block of jewel. That's a material type. Okay, so silky jewel blocks definitely are a way to go. That's 224,000 EMC. If we can make a dimension out of these and then mine them and send them home to be turned into EMC, that would be pretty cool. And that's what I'm thinking here, right? I'm just looking to see if there's any other types of blocks that might be cool. So let's come back in a minute as I look. Like diamond blocks, way lower than 224. Emerald blocks, it's about half, right? So these are definitely better than emerald blocks. Uh, I'll continue poking around in JEI and just see if there's any block with a better value. Wouldn't it be awesome if I could have a dimension made out of octuple compressed cobblestone? I checked. Sadly, the answer is no, you cannot. But it would be cool. Uh, but I don't see any uh, compressed blocks as an option in here. All right, so silky block of jewel is what it looks like, right? Um, so first off, we're going to need a bunch of silky block jewels to get our material tuning, right? Um, so to, to get that, we'll need that. We're also going to need a level five component and the three lightning bolts and the three reds, right? Uh, so do we have any level five components yet? We do. Hooray. Good. We even have a level six, which is cool because level sixes can be used to make some really OP stuff. Uh, which is always a good time, right? So a level five, uh, we're going to need the, the three points. Those are two pointers. Uh, where's the three pointer things? This, yes. And the three lightning bolt thing, that. Um, and we're going to need one of these and a dimlet base part. And then we're going to need uh, the material absorber, right? And that shouldn't be too bad. We just need some gravel. Do we not have gravel available to us? I don't know how that's possible, but you know what? Crazier things have happened in life. Okay, so there's your material absorber. So now what we want is a silky jewel, um, which shouldn't be too bad to get our hands on, right? Uh, so I'm gonna want you, and then turn that into that. I'm gonna teach you this, and then we'll pull out a stack of them so that we can convert them into blocks of silky jewel. Right, and I'm gonna burn you, and then we can look up silk. Cool. Um, and then what we should be able to do is, hey, let's do this with a building gadget, because that's a good time. Let's do, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm actually gonna do it in an exchange. Cool. So we will put this dude here. How's that look, right? Now, if I put my material absorber here, aha, cool. And then you, perfect. One more batch, ought to do it. Okay. And then also you. Cool. So you are now material absorber, block of silky jewel. So we now know, in theory, if I put all this stuff in there and do this, we should have a material dimlet, silky jewel. Sweet. I like it. All right, now I have to remember how to make a dimension with that as the ground. Um, so RF tools, dimensional manual. So what modifier do I want to put that? In? Also, up to, I think it's the silky jewel block, then something, right? Um, so give me a sec to remember how that works exactly. All right, I think I can do this, right? Terrain dimlet flat. So in theory, uh, yes. Yes. If a material dim is placed before a terrain dimlet, it'll create a world made out of material. So in theory, I put dimlet silky jewel followed by terrain dimlet flat. Hopefully it doesn't mean flat as in Y level equals two, because that would stink. Um, but we'll see what happens, right? Uh, so we're gonna give this a shot. Silky dim one. Store it, boom, 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 boom. 
You, so are going to start building. You have a lot of RF. Wow. That's a lot of RF. Uh, 401,000 R... 401,000 RF a tick. Uh, maintenance cost. That is serious business. Um, what's our... You're using 50K. And you're also using 50K. So it's totally 50K RF per side. Which is cool, because I think what that means is I can totally... Right. Actually, I don't need you up there anymore because you're going to go here, right? Um, and then more points like you and you. Okay, so that should be 250,000 RF a tick going in. So creation cost is 401,000 RF a tick. Maintenance cost is 100,000 RF a tick. So once we get this thing built, which will take, you know, not terribly long, but definitely a few minutes at 400,000 RF a tick. Um, once we get that built, we should be cool. Now you have 171 billion RF a tick, or 171 billion RF total. So granted, we're losing 250,000 RF a tick, but that should be done soon, and then it's going to dip into the 100,000 RF a tick. That's what it's going to be like to maintain this dimension. So once this thing's fully charged up, it should bump down to 100 RF a tick. All right, so let's wait for this thing to be charged up. Um, the other thing we're going to need here is a matter transmitter. And a dialing device. Cool. Look at that. Very nifty. All right. So you're going to be um, dimlet room. OK. While we're waiting for this thing to charge up, we might as well you know, get things going. Uh, Harden should be plenty of power for you, buddy. I don't ever see you needing more than, you know, 256,000 RF a tick. So I think we don't even have to remove the limit on that. So dimlet room, cool. You're getting charged up. You're both getting charged up. That is cool. You are at 80%. So we're pretty darn close uh, to having the RF needed inside that realized dimension tab. As a reminder, if this dimlet ever loses power, then we're going to be in some serious business. Um, that's going to be bad times because it means that if you're in that dimension when that happens, you're going to have a bad day. All right, so 100% charged, you are fully powered. Nice. Uh, internal buffer is right around 4 million, I think. So once that thing hits 4 million, we'll see this guy start to fill up again. Huzzah! All right, so we're still using 100,000 RF a tick, right? Um, I guess it's just fluctuating between which one happens to be pumping that power in. But still, 100,000 RF a tick going into this thing to maintain the dimension. If we check over here now, we should see Silky Dim, which we can dial once. Um, reminder to always bring your way home, because without it, you'll be literally stuck. Uh, home base, good, check, ready to travel. Let's see what this dimension looks like, shall we? I have no idea. It should, in theory, be Silky Jewels making up the flat terrain. I'm just hoping it's not flat terrain like Y level two or whatever. Oh, hey, that's a cool looking dimension. Hello. Hello, what Y level am I at? I'm at Y level, nice, I'm at Y level 64. That is exactly what we want. And look at that, blocks of silky jewels. Not to mention a pretty spiffy looking sky uh, and some interesting mechanics here. I like, I likes the look of it. That is cool, right? So just to be clear, Right. I now just got myself 14 million EMC. <laughs> so let's add this dimension. Um, silky dim. Boom, boom. Locked in so I can teleport here whenever I want. But I'm going to teleport to our home base for a sec. And that is super cool. Um, we want to keep that thing chunk loaded. What do we have to do to keep that thing chunk loaded? I assume it's something like we just claim the chunks and we're good. That might work. We'll find out. Uh, let's come back in a sec. All right, so this episode, 
getting us a ton of silky jewels. Boom, tons of tons of EMC, right? Next episode, farming that dimension. Uh, so we got to wrap up the episode here, but we'll come back next time and we'll be farming that dimension for EMC. And then we're going to compare the silky dimension <laughs> mining stuff with... Uh, what we have going on already for power, which is this, oh my goodness, you just have so much junk. Uh, cool stuff. Mobs drop so many things in this pack. Uh, which we've already got 28 Infinity Catalysts, right? Which is stack EMC of 95 billion. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, but we're going to have some fun seeing how Silky Jewels showing up in mass quantities compare to that Emeralds rule. Because it it may be good, it may not. We'll find out. For now, $1.29 off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. You know what to do.